Today I'm going to show you how to properly back up your Google account on your existing Android phone so that when you transfer to a new phone now or later in the future, everything is ready to go as soon as you sign into your Google account. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Now, as a Android fan, I love how my contacts and calendar and everything is completely backed up on my Google account so that when I transfer to a new phone, pretty much everything is there. Now, today I will show you the proper way to make sure that everything is backed up so you're not missing any info when you go to your new phone, as well as if you are missing info, how to properly get that transferred over as well. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have a Google account on our phone. So today I'm using the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, but this will work on any other Android phone as well. So we're gonna do that by going into the settings of the phone. I like to pull down the notification shade and press the settings right here. So once we get to this menu, I'm gonna scroll down and find an option that says accounts and backup. So if I open this, I have a few different options. So there you can see all the accounts that are added to your phone, but I'm actually going to go to the backup and restore portion. So under this option, because this is a Samsung phone, I do have the Samsung account backup, so you can back up your information that way. That actually offers a lot of cool features, but today we're just talking about the Google account right here. So here you can see that my backup data is turned on, so everything is being backed up. Here under backup account, you can see my email address. And if you don't have that info right there, you could click and tap to add the email address you want to have everything backed up to. And then down here, we can actually go into Google account settings. So this is gonna show you a little bit more about what is backed up. So right here, it's saying backed up to Google Drive. And if we click on the little question mark here, it's gonna tell us a little bit more about what is actually backed up. So here you can read through all of this but it's mainly gonna back up photos and videos automatically. But if you want files and folders backed up, you do need to manually do that from Google Drive. So let's go back here. So right now, because I'm going to do the transfer, I'm going to select backup now just to make sure everything is backed up. Here we can see it's backing up to my account. And then here it shows what kind of information is being backed up. So I have certain applications that are being backed up. So it's going to load all those apps that have info that's being backed up to my Google account. And that could be settings or other data that I've given permission to my Google account to store. So here we have call history. Here we have contacts. Here we have device settings. So this is certain things like the wallpaper, Wi-Fi password, and default applications on the phone. So next we have photos and videos. So if we open this up, it's going to show us all the settings that are selected. And right here we have backup and synced enabled. Now, if you don't have that, I highly recommend turning that on and make sure that the upload size says high quality. This means it's going to upload an unlimited amount of storage without ever having to pay anything. So it's going to load those at a very high quality. You're not going to notice the difference between what you take on your phone and what is actually backed up. And then if you wanna make sure everything is backed up on your phone, including all the other photo albums you may have, select this backup device folders, and then you go in here and you turn all of those on. So I don't know if I want all of that information right now, it's kind of a lot of stuff. So we're just gonna keep it with the normal uh, backup of my gallery right now. And then the last option here is SMS text messages. So this backup will include sent and receive messages. This does not include MMS media, so no picture messages. So as of right now, I've actually never seen that work. So I highly recommend checking out Smart Switch to be able to backup all of your text messages from your old phone to your new device. So now that that looks good, here you can see that it's still backing up some of the information right at the top of the screen. So let's wait a minute until that's backed up. And you can also see that bar right here in the notification panel indicating that the backup is still in progress. Okay, the backup has now finished. So we're going to go back. And then the last option here is you have automatic restore. So that means once you add your Google account to the new phone, it's automatically going to restore that info. So if you tap on this, it's going to turn that off and then turn it back on. Now, before we go to the new phone, if you're going to continue using your phone, let's make sure that from now on, if you're taking pictures or adding new contacts, all that information is backed up so that as soon as you get the new phone, you're ready to transfer very easily. So first we're gonna head into the contacts application. And then when you add a new contact, so when we select the plus here, make sure that it says your Google account right there at the top so that it's backing up to that account. So sometimes you will see another account to back up to, but I just have that one account on this phone to back up all that information. So now that we've checked contacts, let's check the photos. So I'm going to go into all of my apps, 
go to the Google folder and there we have the photos application. Now, if you never have opened this application before, it might give you the option to back up everything, but I have already done that. So now we're going to select the menu right here and then we're gonna go down to the settings and then we're going to go to backup and sync. So here we saw this menu before, but we're gonna double check that backup and sync is on. If you wanted to add any new folders to that backup, you could change them right there. Here, it's going to back up my photos when I'm connected to cellular. So let's say I'm out taking my photos and then I drop my phone in the pond or whatever and it's gone forever. If it had cellular backup when I took those photos, those photos would have already been backed up. So everything is safe. So now that I have confirmed the correct settings are set on my old phone, let's go ahead and show you how to transfer everything to the new phone. When you're at the store setting up your new phone or maybe when you get your device, make sure you follow these instructions. So we're going to go through and agree to the terms and that information. And right here, it's asking if I want to restore information for my old phone through Smart Switch. I could do that, but for now, we're going to skip that. I have plenty of videos about how to do that if you want. Then the next thing is we're going to connect to a Wi Fi network. Now, you may also have a SIM card in. I recommend signing into your Wi Fi so that it's not using any of your data plan. Now that we're connected to the Wi Fi, we can move forward. And then here it is asking us to sign into our Google account. So we wanna make sure that we sign into the same account that we had on the existing phone. Now I highly recommend signing in here versus going through all of these settings and then signing in once you get to the home screen, it just works a lot better. And then add your password. And then here it is asking if you wanna link your phone number to your Google account to make sure that everything is working well and you can have a security alerts and other information. So I'm going to select the yes I'm in. And then here we need to agree to the terms and conditions of using a Google phone. And then once you get to this page, it is asking us to choose a backup to restore. So here I have a few different phones that I could back up from, but right here, this SMN960U1 backup was done eight minutes ago. So that is the backup that I did on my Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And now I can restore it to the Samsung Note 10 Plus. So I'm going to select that backup and then it's going to show me all the information that it can back up. So I could restore all the applications I had installed on my Note 9. Here I have all of those contacts I can restore, my call history, my device passwords and more, and then SMS messages. And then here we have information that's automatically going to be syncing because I added my Google account, which is Google Calendar, Google Contacts, Google Photos, and Gmail. So for the applications, you can actually tap on this and you can go through and maybe you don't want some of these applications to come over. So let's say you wanna clean up the amount of apps that you have on the new device that you don't use anymore. You can actually go through and uncheck ones that you don't want to come over. Okay, so I've gone through the list and unchecked some of the apps that I no longer use anymore. And then here at the bottom, these are applications that will be installed manually um, just because you have a Google phone, so it's going to install a lot of those apps or because Samsung is requiring these certain applications to be installed when you activate this device. And then once you have all the applications ready, you can select OK. And here at the top, it's saying that's going to use 6.5 gig of my 241 gig available. So now that I'm ready, I'm going to select Restore. And then here we're gonna go through and quickly set up the rest of our phone so we can agree to the time. We could add fingerprint or password to protect our device. I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to skip it. And then here it's asking us to set up our Google Assistant. So we're going to select accept. And then because this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, Samsung is asking if I want these other applications to be installed to the phone just to have a better user experience uh, once the phone is loaded. And then here are some other applications that would be installed um, from Google. So if I'm happy with all those, I could uncheck some of them. So I'm not gonna use the Outlook application. Uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna use pretty much all of those other ones. And I wanna try out this quick measure. So we're gonna select OK. And then it's going to start downloading all the information in the background. Uh, like I said before, make sure you're on Wi-Fi. So if you get this at the store, you can go through this whole process, get to the home screen. And then when you get home and connect to the Wi-Fi, it will automatically start downloading those applications uh, once you connect to that Wi-Fi. So it's not going to be using your data if you have a limited data plan. 
So that just took a minute. Now it's asking to sign into our Samsung account. Now that's a whole nother way in which you can back up all your information and everything. But you do have this new option, which I highly recommend, is you can actually connect with your Google account to your Samsung account. So they're one in the same. And Samsung account has a lot of benefits that I'll talk about on another video. So for right now, I'm actually going to skip that step. And here are some of those things that you get when you sign up for a Samsung account. So if you're interested in that, uh, click the sign in button, but we're gonna skip for now. And now we are all done and we can select finish to go to the home screen and begin using our phone. So once you get to this home page, it will show you this notification in the notification panel that it is going to still go through that setup process. So it's mostly restored everything like the contacts and some of that information, but right now it's saying there's still 200 applications that it needs to download. So that's definitely gonna take some time to download all of those applications on the phone. So I'm going to let it do that and we'll come back and show you everything that was restored. So that did take a while as it had to re-download every single one of those applications to my Note 10 Plus here. So if we go into the notification bar, here you can see that it's still downloading, but it says that 10 of the downloads failed. So we're gonna tap on that to see if there's any other information. And so it's taking us right into the Play Store. And here it's showing all the applications that updated. There were some that do still need to be updated. So we're just gonna select update all right there. All right, so now let's go through the list and double check that everything did get transferred over. So the first thing was apps. So when we go into our application drawer, we can see that we have tons of different applications that all have been downloaded to the device. So that worked great just as expected. It did take longer than doing something like the smart switch transfer, but this is definitely an option. Next, let's check the call history. So we're going to go into the phone application. Then we're gonna go into recents. And so here I haven't made any phone calls with this. I haven't done anything, but you can see that I have quite a bit of call history here in the device. Now, the next thing is contacts. So if we select contacts down here, you can see that I now have all of these different contacts that were all backed up on my Google account. And I also have pictures there if I had those attached to my Google account. So it looks like my contacts did great. If I go down to the bottom, I can see how many contacts I had. So here it's saying that I have 1,588 contacts. Previously, it said I had something like 2,000, which I believe I actually had many duplicates. So it looks like it is not showing those duplicates anymore. And all of my contacts are right here. Now the next is device settings. So to verify that, let's go into the settings of the device. And a few other things would be Wi-Fi network. So if we go into our Wi-Fi connections, go to advanced, and then scroll down here and we can go to manage networks. And then here we can see other networks that I've connected to in the last 30 days. So those are definitely in here. So if you previously connect to other or multiple Wi-Fi's throughout the day, all that information should be transferred. Next is photos and videos. So if we open up the Google application here, you'll see that photos app. So if we open photos, as soon as we open it, it's asking if we want to enable backup and sync. I highly recommend that we do this. And so then we can see all our old photos and it will continue to backup any no, new photos that we take. So we're gonna select next. And then here you choose high quality or original. I'm gonna choose high quality and then backup over cellular data when there's no Wi-Fi. If you have an unlimited data plan, you could select that, but right now we're just going to select confirm. So now it's taking you through how you can search for your content and it's gonna organize all your photos and create these little fun things from your photos. So instantly you can see all my photos are here. So these are all the pictures that I've taken with my phones that are backed up on my Google account. So if something's not in here that I had on my previous phone, it's most likely because it was in a different folder that wasn't being backed up. So you could go to your old phone, make sure that it's backed up, connect it to Wi-Fi, and then they would start showing up here. So going forward, any photo I take will be backed up in here, and I'm confident that if I lose my phone or anything, I'll have access to those photos. Now, real quick, I do wanna mention that all the photos backed up to the Google account are only in the Google Photos application. If I go into my apps and go into the gallery, you will not see any of those photos here in the gallery. So this is great because it saves space on your phone, having them all in the Google Cloud, but they are not available to be accessed here unless I go into the Google Photos application and I select a picture, tap the menu and select save to device. Then I can go back to the phone's gallery application and now you can see I have saved that picture to the device. Now next is SMS text messages. Now here is our text message app. 
And I said before that many of the messages have never come through, but there you go. It looks like it does back up text messages so that you can see all of that information. And if I scroll down here, it actually goes back really far. I have text messages coming in from 2016 that were backed up to my account. So yes, it definitely does back up that information. So I haven't signed into my Samsung account or anything, so I can verify that those do come through when you do the Google backup restore. So to also mention that because I have my Google account sync, it will back up other things like calendar. So here in the calendar, we can see that all of my events are there. If I add a new calendar event, we can see that I have all of those different calendars as well. So that all came over just fine. Also, it talked about backing up the contacts. We already checked that. And then it talked about wallpaper. So here on the main screen, that's the new wallpaper. And then if we go to the lock screen, that's the new wallpaper. So nothing I'm really concerned about. I like these wallpapers better, but if you did wanna make sure that your wallpaper transferred over, you would either need to have that picture downloaded somewhere so you could re-add it, but that was the only thing that didn't transfer over. Now, even though all of our applications did come over, it's a little bit hard to find them. So make sure you go into the settings here and sort, and I like to sort by alphabetical order so I can actually find things. So the last thing I wanna show you is that when you go into these applications, they are not signed in to any account yet. It didn't automatically pull over that information for security reasons. So let's say we go into an application and we want to log in. So here in Reddit, I log in, but I can't remember my username or password. So I've already signed into Reddit on Google Chrome on my computer, and I wanna have that information here without me having to retype everything. So this is how you are able to go about doing that without having to type in all your accounts and passwords again. So if we go into the settings of the phone, and then we're going to go down to general management, and then language and input, down here you have what is called autofill service. So this is the service that is on Android that will automatically fill in your username and passwords that are allowed to be saved to Google. So right now it's set to Samsung Pass by default, but I'm going to choose Google. And then here it's asking if we trust this application. So I select OK. And so now if I click the settings here, it's actually going to tell me a little bit more about autofill with Google. So here with a single tap, it will fill in passwords, addresses, credit cards, and other information from your Google account. Here you can choose what account that's going to be from. So that's the correct account. And because this does link through Chrome Sync, you will need to add a passphrase if you have that enabled so that it can access all that information. Now that we've added our information here, we can go in and see all the information it knows and understands. So if I want to adjust my address or anything, I can come in here and do that. And then I also have the option down here for passwords. So if I open this up, it's going to show me my password manager. And then I can see all the different applications that know my password and have them saved. So here, if we tap on one of these, we could edit the saved passwords, but you do need to have a lock screen set up on your phone to be able to access those settings. So now that we have Google autofill enabled, let's go back to Reddit and sign in. So now when I tap on the username, I can select autofill and here we can see my username and it's automatically pulling in from Google. So I'm gonna choose that, it automatically enter that information and then I can select login. And now I have logged into that application without typing out anything. This is something that now when I set up my phone, I can go through and add all that information. And if there's an app you haven't added that information to, it most likely will ask to save that info. So the next time you do this, it's really easy to log back into your account. Now, if you also wanna have access to all of those passwords and information while you're browsing the internet, make sure you go into the Google Chrome application, and then you will want to go in here into the settings. And then here you need to sign into the same account. And then here we can use the passphrase and sync all of our Google passwords and autofill information into Google Chrome as well. And then here it is showing you what is going to back up. So it's going to sync our Chrome data. And here we could manage all of that information. So that is how you back up everything to your Google account and restore it to your brand new phone. Now I'm using the Galaxy Note 10 Plus today. This could be done with any other Android phone as well. So if you don't have all your stuff backed up to Google or you just wanna do a copy from your old phone to your new phone, I definitely recommend checking out Samsung Smart Switch as it will pretty much copy everything over wirelessly from phone to phone without a Wi-Fi connection. And then you can have all of your information here. One of the other benefits of that is it will actually 
actually back up your home screen. So exactly how you had your phone laid out, that will show up on the new phone. I really wish Google would add that to this backup service. But if you wanna see how to do that, make sure you check out the video right here on the side. I explain exactly how that's done and how you can get everything copied over. So if you have any further questions about this process, please let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see that video all about SmartSwitch, make sure you select the playlist over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.